Welcome to It's Own Electric. It's time to test the important aspects of the BYD SEAL Excellence All-Wheel Drive. We're going to test how far you can go on a full charge. The actual cabin noise inside the car, how silent is it? Charging, how fast will it charge from 10 to 80%? And finally, acceleration, how quick is it from standstill to 100 kilometers per hour? This is a mid-sized sedan, and as you probably can tell from the exterior, it's slippery. The CD value, the air resistance, is 0.219. So it's slippery, as I said. That is actually promising because that will help increase the range, especially in higher speeds. Whilst talking about the range, this car is powered by BYD's own LFP blade battery pack with a gross capacity of 85 kilowatt hours and a net capacity of 82.56 kilowatt hours. The good thing with the LFP battery pack is that you can charge it to 100% without the battery pack taking any damage. You can't even limit the charge limit on the screen inside the car. Always charges to 100% if you don't unplug the car from the outlet. So 520 kilometers is the stated WLTP range of this all-wheel drive version. So hopefully we will be able to come close to those numbers. What you lose on the swings, you will gain on the roundabouts. And what do I mean by that? I mean, the great battery pack, LFP blade pack, does suffer from slow charging. So the top speed for DC charging, fast charging, is 150 kilowatts. That's not that impressive for such a new car. Hopefully it's a flat charge curve, but we're gonna test that out. But I guess 10 to 80% will be above 40 minutes. Let's see about that. When it comes to slow charging, home charging, three-phase support, 11 kilowatts. Driving on all four wheels, equipped with two motors, one permanent magnet motor at the rear, one induction here at the front, combined output, 670 newton meters of torque, 530 horsepower. According to specifications, should be able to do 0 to 100 km per hour in 3.8 seconds with a top speed of 180 km per hour. The wheels, 19 inch, these are standard. Driving on 235s, 45s, all around, Continental Eco Contact 6. I think that's the important facts and it's time to start with the range and consumption test. The first part of the range and consumption test. This cycle is a 80 kilometers long trip. I always do the same cycle. It's a mixed speed cycle with speeds between 50 all the way up to 110 kilometers per hour. Average speed, 93 kilometers per hour. I stick to a certain set of rules. Rule number one is to run the AC on auto and 20 degrees and as you see here at the screen I'm running this car BYD at 22 degrees Celsius and the reason for that is it is colder than other cars I can run my Tesla at 20 degrees most European cars at 20 degrees without freezing if I run this one in 20 it is way too cold so this one is at 22 to compensate for that. Second rule is to set the car to dry mode eco and this car has that so eco mode is active. There's three different dry modes sport, eco and normal. And the last and final rule is to stick to the speed limits, current speed limits 100 km per hour. So that's it. Very easy and this way I'm able to create a comparable result. Today's road conditions, 24 degrees Celsius outside, and total dry roads, no wind, so good conditions. This is promising, and probably the best possible consumption you can get with the BYD seal. So soon passing 25 kilometers of total traveled distance. Average consumption until now is 14.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That's efficient. I mean, 
having 530 horsepower, 670 newton meters of torque, all that power, zero to 100 in 3.8 seconds. That's good. That's uh, like Tesla numbers. Let's see how this ends up. I know that a couple of you have asked uh, about the software as such and if it gets over the air updates and if it's evolving. Um, and I mean, the reason for this is, of course, for the consumer, the customer, not to be left behind by BYD. I have been testing a couple of BYDs since the start of my channel. I think this is the fourth one. And the software has always been evolving and been getting better all the time. And I actually have a proof of that. And if I press this little notification bell at the top of the screen, there is actually one update available. In this case, it's a specific update for BYD Assistant. That's the voice commander. It says that it has some new voice packages, some updates to that one. And I can click it to see some details. So this means that BYD is, of course, still shipping pushing out updates for its cars. Hitting the halfway, 40 kilometers put behind. Average consumption until now, 16.1. Or, no, it actually jumped down to 15.9 kilometers per 100 kilometers. So 15.9, that's a good consumption. Let's see how this ends up, but it looks promising. The car in general is really a good package. I think it's reasonably priced and that paired with a great exterior. I really love the exterior design of the car, but also the interior. I mean, this is a good looking car on the inside too. It's uh, by far the best looking interior among all the BYDs. Some people may think that it is a bit too complicated, a bit too round shaped or wavy. I mean, that's part of the concept. This is called a seal and it's uh, part of BYD's sea theme. Uh, I mean, seagull, dolphin, seal, seal, you, etc. Inspired by the ocean. All the materials is really great. So if you want to know more, about the BYD seal. I've actually released a full review of it. I put the link up here. So just click that one if you want to see my full review with more details, more facts, more B-rolls so you can see it better, all the angles, the interior details, etc. Don't miss that one. And to be frank, this is a inspiring car to drive. The steering wheel is direct and precise, very easy to adjust, very responsive. And that paired with the adaptive dampers, this is not a bad package. This is really nice. So the final consumption ended up at 17.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That equals to a full range for the whole battery pack of 480 kilometers compared to the stated 520 WLTP kilometers, that's 92%, so not that far-fetched. I was expecting a bit of a lower consumption though. One big downside with the BYD seal is that it's hard to control the actual consumption. I ended up doing it by calculating the actual consumed amount of electricity. So 17.2 kilowatt hours. But just to be clear, the main reason for it to be hard is that the infotainment, the media screen, the operating system is really giving me a hard time showing me the actual numbers. It's lacking information when it comes to consumption. That's the simplest explanation. To be able to compare this to, to other cars, um, this is kind of a performance sedan, like the Model 3, the Model Y, that's a performance mid-size SUV. 
but still good to compare. Um, the Neo ET5 BMW i4. Uh, this is just in the middle between Tesla, that's the most efficient one, very close to the BMW and the Neo ET5, that's the most thirsty among the pack. So a decent consumption, not the best, but in the mid segments. Let's move on to the acceleration. State of charge 79%, 19 degrees outside, total the dry roads, activating the drag mode, ready to go. Oh. Zero to 60 miles per hour time 3.66 seconds. Zero to 100 kilometers per hour time 3.87 seconds. Okay, so 3.87 seconds, 0 to 100, 3.7 according to, to this one, 79% dry roads, let's go. Oh. 0 to 60 miles per hour time 3.74 seconds, 0 to 100 kilometers per hour time 3.95 seconds. Okay, so 3.95. 0 to 60 in 3.74. Uh, this one is hovering like 0.2 seconds below the real time. So not that accurate, <laughs> but it's always hovering below. So which means that it's a bit of a happy meter. Zero to 60 miles per hour time 3.65 seconds. Zero to 100 kilometers per hour time 3.84 seconds. Acceleration, best possible achieved time at 79% state of charge. As you saw, 19 degrees, dry road, so good conditions. Uh, everything should be in line. And best time, 3.84 seconds for zero to 100 kilometers per hour or 3.65 seconds, zero to 60 miles per hour. So according to spec, I would say uh, BYD is pointing at 3.8 seconds. So very close to the specified time, probably possible to do. Maybe you need to have a state of charge of closer to 100%. BYD has managed to create a car that's very well balanced. I mean, the balance between the power on the front axle and the rear axle is really good. Uh, better than the BYD Han. It feels really stable, doesn't feel insecure, uh, the grip is really good, so nothing to complain about when it comes to the acceleration. It is not as rough or hard at the start, it's a bit softer compared to the Tesla and also the BMW i4 M50, but uh, at the end it still scores a good acceleration time, so a good balance. Let's move on to the cabin noise. This is one of the more exciting parts, uh, I assume, especially for you that's into the market of a new electric vehicle. Cabin noise is something that's getting more important now when uh, you're driving full electric because you don't have any noise from the motor, from the engine at the front anymore. And you hear new things that you haven't heard before. Uh, good thing though, the BYD has really managed to do a silent car. So the battery pack, of course, insulates, but the insulation inside the doors, the double paint windows at the front, uh, and no wind noise at the A pillars really helps out to create a good feeling in the cabin. It's silent. The most interesting thing is that it actually beats the BMW i4 M50 in cabin noise. It's a bit more silent. Even if it's a tiny bit, it's still more silent. And that's impressive. I mean, the BMW plays in the premium segment. The BYD Seal is a lot cheaper and it's not a premium car. It also beats the Renault Scenic and the e Neo ET5 Touring with the 20 inch wheels. And by the way, the BMW is actually running on 19 inch wheels too. So the same size of wheels as the BYD, but a tad wider wheels or tires at the rear. It's actually a bit more noisy, the BYD, than the Neo ET5 Sedan. Let's move on to the last and maybe not least and most important part, charging. How fast will it charge from 10 
to 80%. I mean, this is a blade batter pack. The blade batter packs from BYD is really not known for its fast charging. That's not its main characteristics. You see the same thing on the Teslas using the BYD blade batteries. Uh, and a theoretical top speed of 150 kilowatts is not that impressive. But I did the test and I actually drove the car from 25% all the way down to 10% or actually 9% before charging. It took almost an hour, then I went for charging. As I do with all my tests, I tried to warm up the battery pack. It was 19 degrees outside. So when I hit the charger, I didn't achieve the expected speeds so I'm a bit disappointed and this is the final charge curve and as you see it tops out at 122 kilowatts and closes the charge session at 80% with a speed at 81 kilowatts so then speed is good but I didn't manage to get the top speed of 150 probably due to cold gating or warm gating. Uh, I mean, the thermal management in the BYD pack doesn't really work good enough. So it struggles a bit to keep the correct temperatures in the battery pack while supercharging or fast charging. And that's a bit disappointing. I really hope that BYD will solve this in the next generation of the BYD blade packs. And that's, by the way, coming very soon. I think now in August they are going to publish more information regarding that battery pack and start the deliveries with that pack for some of the BYD cars, at least in China, hopefully available in Europe soon. They're talking about 6C charging. That means that you can charge the battery pack a lot quicker than today. I think today's pack is around 1C, 1.5C maybe. So uh, with that 6C, charge capability you'll probably hit speeds uh, in 800 volt systems or around theoretical at least 350 400 kilowatts that's a big difference so you will be able to charge it from 10 to 80 percent in a manner of like 10 minutes maybe and this session took 38 minutes and 50 seconds so despite having such a low top speed it still somewhat keeps a flat curve but it drops very quickly. So as you see here in the curve, there is a big drop from above 100 kilowatts, 120, down to around 90 in one single percent. And that's signs of a too hot battery pack. So I'll try to summarize this video in a good way. Um, if you are looking for a silent, quick, good looking and decently sized sedan, the BYD seal really checks all that boxes. I mean, the excellence all wheel drive package is really appealing. It's, it's a good package and uh, for that price, it's hard to beat. But if charging and long trips is really important for you if long trips above five, 600 kilometers in one go is important for you. And if you do that often, then maybe charging and the efficiency is lacking. So, if those two points are very important for you, especially charging, then you may be looking elsewhere. To be honest, my recommendation would be to wait for the update to arrive here in Europe. I mean, the updated seal is on the way. It's going to be communicated now, if it hasn't already when I release this video. So there will be updates, there will be fixes to the BYD seal. But I still think it's a, a compelling package as a whole, even this version, but I would still wait. That's it for today. I hope that the information I just gave you comes in handy and that you enjoyed the video. 
If you did, please like, engage, and subscribe. And most importantly, stay electric. Thank you for watching. Speak to you soon.